Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins. The crafty goblins did everything together, until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, while his sister had to stay behind. Ten years later, they were finally reunited, and together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long gone past. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. We should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone, and with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Mom. I love you, too. Sleep well and dream, my doves. What a waste.
small. I killed her. You doing all right? I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives, you know? And instead we've spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. Okay. No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip, two gallons. Let's do this. Goblin face is keep, dollar sign is donate or sell, and trash can is, well, trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff from the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. Everywhere I look, there's just stuff, stuff, and more stuff. Mary and the magpie. Hello, ancient broken down machines. That will be the future owner's problem.
we don't really want to keep anything in here, right? What about that dresser? If you want your towels to rot, go for it. Fair enough. Junkyard. Thanks for clearing out those cabinets. Not my pleasure. Say ah. Uh, I remember cutting off shaving cream beards with these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, ew, ew, ew. Raven Sarah. Oh, God. I can still taste it. Put it away. Ugh. Ancient appliances, you are staying here. Although, that oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. We are not moving the oven. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks? Hmm. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. We could make some pretty good money if we sell this. And I know I'd end up eating on the couch most of the time anyway. Oh. Oh, God. That's... What's that smell? <laughs> oh, what's that smell? <laughs> oh, what's that smell? Smells like delicious garbage. Ooh, yes! Delicious indeed! <laughs> or could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky. Hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. You hungry? We have a whole lot of nothing. Aw, uh, I was hoping maybe you could make me one of those pickle and ketchup sandwiches. I'm sorry, sir. We are all out of pickles today. Could I interest you in a ketchup-only sandwich? Looks like there's still a bottle back here. Uh, ew. Says the guy who used to eat peanut butter with ranch. Mm -mm. So good. <sighs> I completely forgot we had a pet vole for a few days. Poor volcano. She was in rough shape when we found her. Good thing Marianne actually knew what she was doing with injured wildlife. Lasagna! Lasagna! Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. Oh, don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch, too. Oh, I'm quite right, love. Uh, she can have my corn. Here you go, little one. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> Tessa really did keep us all fed. She always tried to take care of everyone. Still does, I guess. What's this doing down here? Is that... gum? Ugh. I guess that was probably me. What to do with this? Tables are expensive. 
And besides, this one's an Allison and Tyler original. I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah, still deciding what to do with them. I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... But not really. I get it. It's just weird seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. I'm sorry. That sounds really rough. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like a thousand times better. But I've got a ways to go before I'm comfortable taking my shirt off. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. I love this one. <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on, smile, like Ugh, gross stain is gross. Ugh, what happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. I was so afraid that Marianne would ground me for the rest of my life. But she didn't, right? No. I remember her saying that, that sufficiently adventurous play ensures that accidents will happen and that it wasn't a big deal. But still, no more tea parties inside. Like Allison. You hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. <gasps> my sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. That's a nice face. I wonder if my horse figurine is still in there. You're what now? You know, my blue toy horse. With the kind of melted face. The one you stole from me. What? That never happened. Yeah, it did. I won it at that little Halloween carnival they had at the school every year. You grabbed it and hid it in the pot. Then when I tried to get it back, you said there was a snake inside too. Whatever you say, horse face. We have the same face. Steady now. Take your time. He's not gonna jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I wanna clean the fish too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh, only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison. When we're done with this half, you can take over and do the other one. That sound fair? Yes. Mm -mm. You're right. I was kind of being a brat. Allison, I asked you to clean up the coffee table three times already. <sighs> Oops, I forgot. All right, I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. 
How very non-committal of you. All right, I'll keep it. I really like that armchair. It'll look sharp next to your tree stump nightstand. I'll be the most stylish mountain man ever. But I was actually thinking it should go in your library. Library? We may not even have a living room. <laughs> I have faith in you. Maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean? And finally, I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. Starting the fire again? Yeah, I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Earl Grey or chai? Your call. I'm fixing myself a good old cup of joe. Ah, a nice pot of wakey-wakey juice. Papa needs his rocket fuel. <sighs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh, did you hear that? <gasps> the Ice King is sending us a warning. your punishment, said the Ice King. You shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. <sighs> I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. Think they're all still in the kitchen drawer? We should go take a look. Come check this out. Allison's first drafts. Right. Cause I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. I can't believe she kept all these. <laughs> You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone, but with a few friends who helped her along the way. What are you doing? Research. So, if Marianne was the princess, then who were all the rest? And here we go. Oh, come on. Humor me. You go here. Hmm. Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah, but there was always a catch. <sighs> Poor Moose. Really didn't do him justice. Hmm. 
Justice? Kind of ironic, huh? Considering he was the lawful good one? Too bad the law isn't really just. The bear was the most helpful one. He was always around. Stalking her? What? No. I mean, he was kind of always there, lurking. You done? All right, I think I'm done. You sure? How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? I don't see them being real life people, or this one. Yep, totally Marianne. Why a princess though? Why not a queen? She hated authority. Yeah, she'd have been a terrible ruler. The specific human attributes you have assigned to these forest animals are truly thought-provoking. Indubitably. forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then, suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison? <sighs> Wait. It felt way too real. It was- Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Uh, Great. Hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown, who said you were starting to clean up on the house this morning, so, uh... I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's... Thank you. That was very thoughtful. So listen, I, uh... I wanted to apologize for scaring you yesterday. You didn't. Your shotgun did. <laughs> yeah, uh... Well, I, uh... Anyway, I also came by to say I fired up the Google and I, uh... I did some reading. I, I didn't know the difference between all those words. I mean, I, you know, never been much of a reader. Huh? But... I think I get why what I said was wrong. and I'm real sorry. Oh, and before I forget... Or the lady of the house. It was your mom's favorite recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. Uh, thanks. But we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh yeah, the fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh... I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20-some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. Box is in the barn. Follow me. We'll be right behind you. Apology was something. Come on, we need lights. So be nice to the helpful man. We should pick up some seed for the birds.
So, um, how's school? I graduated already. Outdoor studies. Oh, outdoor studies, huh? Well, it's a good thing I came along when I did. You know, I built this here barn for your mama. You really helped her out, huh? Now, you know, just a few chores here and there. I was, I was glad to help your mother. She... No. I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways, let me find that darn key. Wait. Wait, Sam. You have more of our keys? Yeah. The one for the barn's called a railroad key. See, it's got this special tip that you can... Fascinating. I'll take that off your hands now. Well, I, uh, figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so, uh... Nope. We're good. Thank you. Uh, fair warning. Door's a bit temperamental. <clears throat> Haven't you been taking care of this place? <sighs> you didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? Here, son. Give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little... Damn it. No oh, shit. Well, at least the door is open now. <laughs> yeah, uh... Well, that's easy enough to fix. Now, that fuse box. Oh, no, no, no. You and you are going... All right, that fuse box is not going to fix itself. All right, fuses go into plugs. Should be easy enough. All right, let's take a look. Look at what? The whole jam needs to be replaced. Nah, just need to sand that part down. You could refinish the whole thing, but... That's a lot of work for an old door. Let's try this one. Me that handle. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Oh, shit. Oh. What happened? You okay? Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just a bum knee. I uh, wrecked it playing ball. Ball? Football? In college? Hi. Hmm? Seems good. Everything okay? You, uh, you two look like you got this all in hand, so, um... Look at this. I think this is where she made all her toys. She was so crafty. And she could draw and write and take pictures. She could have been toilet paper tubes, rope, cardboard. I wonder what she planned to make with that. Maybe a car? Ooh, or a tank. Preda rep. What's that? Wolf pee. Ew, what? Do not spill it on your shoes. I sense a story. Well, if by story you mean using it at fireweed to get rid of some rats, and then spilling it on my only pair of shoes, then yes. <laughs> hey, it was not funny. Sure thing, B-boy. I wonder why Sam got so upset. 
Oh, he probably forgot he was all out of bourbon. Well, something about it really got to him. I don't think any of us are exactly happy to see that gun rack. Remind me to take it down later. Hey there, little buddy. Are you cooing at a spider? It had better be a tiny one. Don't listen to the mean lady. You're an eight-legged beauty. Oh man, I'm gonna put together the sweetest toolbox ever. What are we gonna do with this wreck? Take it apart and sell the scrap. Be my guest. It sure looks like a pile of junk to me. Where you see junk, I see dollars. What did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but... Never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow. broken. Are you okay? It stings. Let's go see Mom. But she'll get mad. We weren't even supposed to be here. It's gonna get infected. I, I don't want to. She said not to disturb her and Eddie. Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were family, Eddie. How could you do this to me? Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What were they talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but... I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? He was being a total cop, and Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm gonna show you what I remember. There, by the house. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Out! What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Then why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please, leave. Mary Ann. I'm sorry. Please, just go. How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago, and, well, memory's a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? I don't know. I have no idea. We shouldn't jump to any conclusions. Look, I know he took care of you. 
but that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne, even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? I guess memory's a tricky thing, huh? I know you were just doing your job, but I need you to go before you get in trouble. Please, just get out of here. All right. Zay Brown really felt bad about whatever he came out to tell her. It was still the day she attacked us. He still lied. Now what? We go and get a straight answer from him. Right now? Yes. I'll go get my car keys. But what will these mountains of trash do without us? Fuck the trash. believe Brown lied. I mean, I may not be the guy's biggest fan, but he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. But gloating about it is really not cool. Oh, it's Tina. I gotta take this. Yeah, j just a sec. I'm parking the car. I'll just go stretch my legs then. No, just give me a sec. Okay, Tina, what's going on? Hi, hon. I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when? They're just in the area for a couple of days, so they'd like to come by day after tomorrow. Oh, uh, I'm not sure it'll be ready. Hun, this guy is very motivated, but I know he's looking at other properties. Not like you've had people breaking down the door. I appreciate that, but we've kind of got a lot going on over here. Did I mention it would be an all-cash offer? It's, it's not the right time. A cash offer, Allison. I'm sorry, but it'll be a total mess. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Okay, well, you tell me when you're ready. Huh, well, I think I just made Tina's shit list. God, I'd love to be able to make something like this. In a few weeks, you'll be able to climb to the top of that waterfall with an ice pick. Marianne was anxious about rocks falling on the road. She always assumed the worst would happen. artist really nailed this one. Dorian Key. Kinda rings a bell. Looks like you found a nice spot. We've been here before, right? I feel like I've been here before. So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? She had someone who wanted to see the house, but he could only come by day after tomorrow. And you told her no? Yeah. We need more time than that you know, to get things cleaned up and 
you know. Thanks. But what if it's the only call we get? And I guess we just scroll and lose our minds in that fucking house. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <sighs> so, before Tina called, we were talking? Yeah. I'm not happy your foster father fucked up. Oh yeah? Because you sure sounded he like it. He hid information about Marianne. I know! You just don't have to rub it in. I get it. You're always gonna side with him over me. Come on, that's not fair. Then why do you keep doing it? This town, these people, they're just memories to you. But it's my home, Tyler. My friends, my family. And as much as I want answers, I'd rather not lay waste to my entire life to get them. I didn't come here to ruin your life, Allison. I just want some answers. I know. That's why we're doing all this, right? Her hometown looks pretty picturesque from here, doesn't it? You're way more attached to this place than you let on. So, you really want to live somewhere super secluded like this? Alone in a cave? Speaking for the trees? I do. Is it really that hard to imagine? Oh yeah? Who do you think's gonna come visit you out there, in the middle of nowhere? Well, I was hoping you would. You feeling that, Ty? Yeah. Found you! North Star! Okay, now you're the star and I'm the compass. Okay. And don't cheat. I know you were sending me fake hints last time. I did not. Yes, you did. Okay, okay, I won't do it again. You were always accusing me of cheating. Because you totally did. It was a cool game. Guessing where you were just by feeling what you felt. No one else could play it with us. That was the beauty of it. For real? You never wanted any other friends? No, not really. I mean, we had each other. That was enough for me. So, not too disappointed I turned down our chance to be billionaires? Nah, all that money would have made me soft. And I've spent way too many years polishing my edgy side. You were right to call me out earlier. I was being a jerk about Eddie. I'm all for enjoying the wins as they come. But maybe not at the expense of my father figure? I'll try my best. I can't believe the old cannery is still in business. Plenty more fish in the sea. For now. So, I have to warn you. I'm not sure we're getting any answers out of Eddie. You won't have a choice. We're not ten years old anymore. He'll probably say he's too busy to talk. That's how he tends to avoid conflict. You're not looking for conflict. Just answers. <sighs> Let's be honest. Lately, that's been pretty much the same thing. I haven't been trying to pick fights. You know that, right? I just want closure. That's all. I know. I remember that time both the bridges collapsed? Yeah. It was a week before they got the roads reopened. And Sam had to bring us supplies with his boat. It felt like our house was on a deserted island, but way colder. People come here from thousands of miles away to look at that glacier, and we get to see it from our deck. Hey, you should remember that sales pitch for when we have another buyer.
Hey, look what I found. Aha! I knew it was still here. I knew we'd been here before. You claimed it as part of the Ronin Kingdom. And it still is. All it needs is a little update. What are you doing? What I wanted to do back then, but I didn't have the guts. There, looking better already. You're right. Way better. So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Let's try to let him get his side of the story out, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. Have a good day, Mr. Brown. Morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler? Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Wilson, could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be- Oh, good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm going to take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzi to come back to the station. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Great. He has an excuse to brush us off. I'm sure. Hey. He speaks. How's Delos treating you so far? It's been good to see Allison. She's been talking nonstop about you lately. I know she's happy to have you here. Hey, been meaning to say, Allison showed us that article you wrote for the Juno Daily last year. You were spot on. The state needs to be giving way more money to youth centers. Fireweed was lucky to have you. Thanks. I spent a lot of time fighting for more outdoor activities. Made some enemies in the administration over that one. But the first time those kids summoned Mount Roberts, Man, they were so proud. It felt great. I know exactly what you mean. I, um, volunteer sometimes with the JCE. You know, give lectures about police work, lead group talks when I can. Wait, really? That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't mean to preach, but the kids in those groups, be it Fireweed or the JCE, they need people who really understand them. People who know where they're coming from. And will fight for what they need. Anyways, sorry for the rant. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Everything all right? Your uncle said you two were going to be knee-deep in trash for a few days. A few days? That's optimistic. It feels like every time we clear out a drawer, two more just appear out of thin air. Ah, huh. yes. You got my sympathies. When we emptied Linda's parents' house, oof. I thought we'd have to rent a backhoe. How is Linda? I feel like I haven't seen her in months. Good. Yeah, she started working over at the high school as the librarian. Pay's not great, but she gets to see the kids every day, so... <laughs> I bet Brendan's thrilled. Oh, yeah. Happy as any teenager who's got to spend extra time with his mom. Well, I'll let you work. Eh, no worries. You're not a bother. Dr. Torres, you said your daughter was with you during the incident? Yes, she was. I'll need her information to them. Can you Tyler Ronan. Good to see you again. 
you've you gotten that tall. Anderson, that like usually that. happens between ages 11 and 21. <laughs> yeah, huh? Yes, well, uh, welcome home. My ex-husband. Does she live with you most of the time? Thanks. It's been a while. So, what brings you two around? Because of my hours. She stays with me on the weekends. We're here to see Chief Brown. Oh boy, what do you do now? Suspects wanted for a felony. Oh, well, don't forget to read him as Miranda writes. So is there anything I can help you with? You might, actually. Is there any way we could see the file for our mother's case? Ah, um, well, you're legally allowed to look at anything that concerns you, so you could always file a request for access. So we can see it? Of course. I can start the paperwork if you want. It's okay. We'll figure it out with Brown. Thanks. All right. So, apparently they keep all the case files right here. Jesus! You scared me! Sorry. Anyway, if Brown's not gonna be straight up with us, we should just read it for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, all right. I have to be in surgery at nine. I was already running behind. Of course. It says here you work at Cottonwood Hospital? That's right. That sure is a commute. It certainly is. What's your usual working hours? I'm a surgical resident at one of the only hospitals in Southeast Alaska. I'm basically always on call. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming in after a 24-hour shift. Did you need something, Allison? Uh, yeah. Tyler? Morning, Chief Brown. Good morning, Tyler. Hey, could we talk to you in private? It's a little urgent. Can you excuse me for a second, Dr. Torres? <sighs> What's going on, you two? We'd like to see our mother's case file. We talked to Greg's. We were hoping to file a request for access. Today. Excuse me. Come on. You can fill out the paperwork, but the file won't be ready for a few days. How long is it going to take, exactly? That depends. Three days. A week. A week? Aren't all the files just upstairs? Yeah, but the approval process takes time. I don't know what you're looking for in that file. I was the officer in charge of the case, and there's nothing you two don't already know. Look, guys. I've got a victim waiting to finish your statement. We can file the access paperwork later tonight. All right? I hate when he's stubborn like that. So what now? Of course, Miss Torres. Where were we? <coughs> well, he's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Where do you think they'd stash her file? I don't know. The archive room? Maybe Eddie's office? Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. Could you go through the full details of your morning with me, Dr. Torres? Of course. I woke up at five and got ready for work. Isabella's father was coming over to pick her up at 6.30. So I woke her up at six. I made breakfast. And as we were eating, I realized I hadn't grabbed the mail the night before. Isabella asked to come with me. So I helped her into her coat and boots before we went out. We stepped outside. It was still quite dark, but she spotted it anyway. Someone, something, was going through our mailbox. Let's go upstairs, Tyler. Hey, what are you two up to over there? Everything all right? Uh, yeah, everything's fine. We're just, uh, I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency, lake water, you know, Mother Nature's juice cleanse. And there's a bathroom just past the break room. Behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. There must be another way up. Should we just look around? Yeah. Okay. Act normal. up to a staircase on the side of the building, but it'll definitely be locked from the inside. 
If one of us were to create a diversion, the other could slip upstairs and open the door. And since you're the troublemaker, I nominate you as the one to make a scene. Wait, really? Got a better idea? Not really. No. Right. Let's go. Guess I probably can't trip the circuit breaker, but I could turn the lights off. Just go. Improvise. Oh, whoops. Tyler. What now? Turn right when you exit the station and follow the side of the building. The staircase will be right there. You head now? Yeah, I need a smoke. You should think about quitting. Only gets harder the longer you do it. Yeah, I know. While you're at it, get your sister to stop too. Garbage cans are like the opposite of bear proof. You know, it's actually really unhealthy for animals to eat our trash. Simmer down. We don't have time for a ranger rant. And I've got the... <laughs> uh, is that supposed to be Greg's? Oh, yeah. Well, no one knows for sure, but the resemblance is uncanny. Who's the artist? Gold case. Was that red warehouse part of the whole chicken farm business? You know it shooting range now. Uh. Shit. Where are you? Right here. Open the door. Quick, get in. Oh god, what did I just do? You took control of your destiny. Own it. How old is Brown? 38. Oh, wow. Graduated really young. Youngest officer to ever join the DCPD. If Eddie catches us in here... There's no turning back now. <sighs> Personnel files... Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. Why is Brown on a first-name basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, you'll find and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. The Fireweed Administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. I knew Eddie pulled some strings to send you there, but <laughs> that's a lot of money. More backdoors and secret moves. Maybe he didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did, but they rejected me. Michael and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck here for the summer with no one but Justin Beaver for company. Why? Well, uh, this letter says you got in. What the hell? So he just turned it down? I'm sorry, Allison. Shouldn't be surprised he's lied to me in the past. You finding anything? No. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. The police chief of Delos Crossing hosts charity events? Huh? Oh, yeah. The community social. He volunteered to help. And since he pretty much knows everyone, and more importantly, who's called the cops on who, he's in charge of the seating chart. Let's put the Vecchies next to... Can you not? Huh, 
The Dallas Police Force is getting a new officer. Finally. This guy has a record, and not a short one. Why is he even in the running? Shh. Eddie has a really hard time hiring people out here. I don't think he has a choice. There's always a choice. and Ronan, perfect daughter. Can we stay focused, please? Seriously? You're gonna try to hack into his computer? We're here for information, and computers are basically information pinatas. Tom invited Eddie over for dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get Eddie's endorsement. Does he? Support Tom? He preferred staying neutral. Whoa. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't, I don't know. But there's a reference number. R68653. One of his emails mentioned the archives. That's gotta be where our file is. Though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust. Huh, hey you. Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. I'd see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <sighs> Seriously? Go on, try. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. Yes. Looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half ton sorting system. Yep, this is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? Because if anyone sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. R68653. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay.
like a step-by-step -step record of the investigation. Well? So far, I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings, though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Alright, I'm in. You can search by keywords. What should I look for? I don't know. Mary Ann Ronan? March 1st, 2005? References 05R61889. There. a summary of everything. Wow, this is a real detective novel. Brown's quite the wordsmith. He's not a writer, Tyler. Police Department. Hello? 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 I can hear you. It's my mom. She, she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? 12 Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! Here. They go. Okay. I need to check out... 0501COMEBR. Okay, here it is. What the hell? Brown reported Marianne to Child Services. What do you mean? I'm looking at a fax receipt with Brown's name on it. Sent to the Office of Child Services with the subject Ronan family. What? There has to be more to this. Just, just keep looking. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? Stole him. No shit, Sherlock. Say I went for a smoke.
reference is 05R68MISC. services. Hello, Mrs. Brew. I'm calling about the Ronin family. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we will be moving forward with the case. Uh, I see. Is there anyone additional we should interview while we're in the area? Yeah, um, Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh-huh. K-A-N-S... K-Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Prue, how worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well, have a good afternoon, Mrs. Prue. You too, sir. I just listened to Brown chatting with OCS. He really did it. He reported her. What if he was just a go-between? He might not have had a choice. We need to keep digging. This is Officer Eddie Brown. This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the... References 2014-201-496. Gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it. 
Hey! Get off me! Rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family! You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah, you're right. We need to talk. The winter before your mother's death was hard. Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plane supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. You're saying Tessa reported her mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. Right. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. So you took her word for it and called child services? Failure to provide adequate food, lack of appropriate supervision, inattention to a child's psychological care. Like it or not, she had a case. What? It's bullshit. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day before she died? You felt shitty, didn't you? That's why you broke procedure? I had to warn her that it was happening and that it wasn't looking good. An assessment worker had been assigned and started doing background checks. What else was I supposed to do? Always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. I'm open to getting there. But it's going to take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it.
group hug? Uh, no. Absolutely not. All right, I'm really gonna have to kick you out now. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm as wicked as it gets. I'll see you both later. Well, that went better than I was afraid it would. What happened up there? Long story. Hey. You know the drill. Chin up. Yeah. Chin up, stand tall. Atta girl. <sighs> I could use a beer. It's noon. Which means that by the time I drink one, it'll be afternoon. I can't be expected to enjoy my pulled pork sandwich without a cold one. Are we still on for lunch tomorrow? Yeah, sure. I'll text you. You two on your way out? Yeah, we've got stuff to do. You ready, Allison? Yep. Let's roll on. Well, don't be a stranger, Tyler. Sure. See you around. See you later. You kids be careful out there, yeah? Allison. What? You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Look, we're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa? Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? I thought she loved us. Really? Chief Brown? Is it true? Is she? Oh my god. Ch children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Everything is going to be alright, okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. Where is everybody? Tessa's gotta be around somewhere. I think I'm hearing something. Well, at least we know the entire world didn't vanish. But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. I need to take a breather. I'm gonna do a bit of shopping. You look for Tessa, okay? On it. I stopped to take a leak, and just as I was finishing up, what do I see? A big old bull was staring me down. So, what do I do? I grabbed my odd six from the trunk and set myself. Maybe I should pick up some for Allison? Yes, sir. Wait, you said you were near Crystal. She's as closed up that way, yeah? Hey, man, when the Lord opens that kind of door, you walk right through. Yeah, that's not exactly legal. I got a bull moose in my truck and a bull tag in my pocket. Who's gonna know the difference? Doesn't make it right. Hey, guys, I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. Oh, hey, Tyler Ronan. Huh. We keep bumping into each other, don't we? What were you guys talking about? I don't think you'd be interested. Doing some shopping? Yep. 
Just the essentials. Well, don't let me stop you. So, I, I heard you were shooting moose outside your permit area. Not really any of your business now, is it? Come on. I'm not going to report you, but it's a shitty thing to do. I think it's time to finish up your shopping and move on, brother. Yeah, I'll do that. You two just can't stay away, huh? Unfortunately. We're looking for Tessa again. Well, she took off about half an hour ago. Sorry. Do you know if she'll be back soon? I don't know if she's even coming back. No one tells me anything. How about Tom? He busy? He's been in the office all morning, so who knows? But it's Tom, so it's probably safe to interrupt him. We could use some of that at the house. signatures. It should have at least been enough to stall construction while we figure out our next move. Well, why don't we schedule a meeting with the Alaska Wildlife Foundation? Try to get their support. Look, Harold, I have to go. We can pick this up at the meeting. I, I should be on my way over soon. Hello, Tyler. Uh, can I help you? Hey, I hope this isn't a bad time, but is Tessa around today? She had to step out for a family matter. This wouldn't be something I could help with, would it? Yeah, maybe, actually. Uh, we were over at the police station and we took a look at Marianne's case file. <clears throat> okay. Tessa reported Marianne to social services. Did you know? Vaguely, but I didn't get involved. I, I didn't think I really had anything to add. You never thought to mention it? Well, no. I'm not sure how a thing like that would have come up. And I didn't want to rub salt in any wounds. Huh. How about when we were in the store yesterday asking about it point blank? That was between you and Tessa. I try to stay out of other people's affairs. Why did Tessa come to the police station that night? She was looking for you two. To make sure you were okay. When she heard what happened, she was a mess. How exactly did she hear about it so fast? Can't remember who called, but you know how it is. No news travels faster than a secret. Everyone knew five minutes after Brown was on his way out. Okay. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry if you felt... Resistance from people around here. To put it mildly. Allison, you know this better than anybody. But your mother's death left a scar on this community. Now, I won't claim we went through anything close to what you did, but it was a cruel reminder of the limits of trust. Well, if we want to get past the limits of trust, we all need to face what happened which means being completely honest about it. We all want to find peace, kids. It's just harder for some people to talk about the past. Now, you let me know if you have any other questions, okay? Hey. Yes? You said I should remind you not to be late for your meeting, so don't be late. Uh, yep, yep, I'll be on my way in a minute. Uh, so... Kids, was there uh, anything else you two wanted to talk to me about? Did you ever hear any rumors about our mother? Like, who our father might have been? Mm, I'm not exactly a rumor monger. 
Your mother was close to a few men, but whether they were your father, I couldn't say. But look, I... Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Uh, Michael, could you finish up the storage room and then just uh, close up? Hey, sure thing, boss man. See you later. You two want to help a brother out, spend the afternoon here working for free? Why not? We came here to talk to Tessa and she's not here. Uh, she, she's at the cemetery, uh, visiting her parents. Oh. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you guys help me close the store and then we can drive over together. I've been meaning to pay my uncle a visit. Can't we just wait for her to come back here? I... I'm not really excited about going there. Allison, we don't have to visit her grave. I'm gonna start working in the storage room. Tyler, join me when you're done. Sure thing. Just give me a sec. Where'd that question about our father come from? I've just been thinking about who he might be. And if he knows anything that could help us figure this shit out. Why? He wasn't a part of our lives. Besides, Marianne always said we never had a father. Well, her name might have been Mary, but I don't think she was a likely candidate for Immaculate Conception. Uh, hey, so you look less than thrilled with the plan. Yeah, like I said, I am not stoked to be going to the cemetery. I know, but I'll be there too. And Michael. I'm not sure I want to drag him into this. Hey, he offered. He wants to be there for you. <laughs> for me, huh? Well, we need to get the store closed, so go give him a hand. All right. I already counted there, but I just need you to double check a few things. It's not complicated. I've got this in the bag. Oh yeah? Because you're just that good, huh? I mean, it's just counting stuff on a shelf, right? Yeah, let's start with an easy one, all right? Go to the back of the room and uh, tell me how many cans of Molto Bene brand tomato sauce we have left. Aye, aye. You know, when you think about it, Glass is really just tortured sand. Huh. Have you been sniffing the spray paint, Tyler? Hold on. Let me count this. There's 14 cans of Malta Bene tomato sauce. Okay. Sounds about right. Man, I'm so good at this. That was easy. I need you to count the bottles of bleach for me. On it. Six? All right. Not bad, Tyler. Not bad. Careful. They might give me your job. Oh, you can have it. Uh, what's next? Come here and help me with this. Hey, you remember the ad for this? What was their slogan again? Huh, something poetic about time travel and life being weird, I think. <laughs> what's up? I need your opinion on this masterpiece. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, come on, look at the hair. Nailed it, right? Uh, there might be a little room for improvement. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, I just said a little. That means it's mostly good. Man, I pour my heart out into this. 
And this is what I get? Cold, Tyler. Ice cold. So this is what you're up to while I was out there doing your work? What can I say? I'm a multitasker. Hey, multitasker. I think you made a mistake here. Total amount should be 36. Oh, how dare you, sir? What? (laughs) I just don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm off my game today. All right. Anything else you wanted me to check? Yep. One last thing, and then we should be free from this purgatory. Hit me. Can you count how many plushies we have in that box over there? Okay. So... Uh, you've got about 11 left in that box. Did I get it wrong? Michael? Ouch, what the fuck? Hey, sorry. It was just too tempting. (laughs) Lesson number one in the ancient art of inventory. Never let your guard down. (laughs) You have no idea what you just started. First one with three confirmed hits wins. Cool. (laughs) Gotcha. Oh, come on. Is that all you got, Ronan? Just you wait. I've got a strategy. Oh, yeah? We'll see. So, is this a typical work day for you? Nah, I usually don't have such good looking company back here. I'm gonna tell Allison you said that. Ugh, she's usually stuck in the office. Besides, your sister while a hottie isn't my type. (laughs) Gotcha. One more hit and you're out. Prepare to feel my wrath. (laughs) God, you're corny. Hey, is it cool that we're throwing these toys around? Aren't you guys gonna like sell them? Nah, supplier made a typo on Vecchi. Can't sell any of them. Cool. No harm, no foul then. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, <laughs> man, you're good. <laughs> I told you not to doubt the golden arm. <laughs> well, I'll never make that mistake again. Okay. I, I need to finish this inventory thing real quick. Your sister's probably done already. Here. Let's hit the bitch's grotto. The what? Fancy name for the couch where Allison and I sit during breaks. Ah. Alright. Cool. Let me see what you've done with the place. Is that a picture of a priest with little hearts? Yeah, that's the hot priest who hosts Bible study with Tessa. And for the record, that was Allison's doing. She had a crush on him for ages, but he is very, very hot. Shit, yeah. I remember him from when we were kids. That's Father Batista. Yeah, he's got that silver fox thing going on now, see? Yeah, yep, I see it. Is that the mangy muskrat? Oh, hey, see that container? That's for you. Huh? It's the trout I caught yesterday at the buzzard hole. Grilled it up with my world-renowned marinade. That's actually super thoughtful. Thank you. You sound surprised. No, sorry. I'm just not used to people randomly doing nice things for me. Oh, I'll have to fix that.
I'm surprised Tessa let you hang this up. Yeah, she hates it. But as long as I don't promote my lifestyle in front of the customers, she doesn't say anything. Man, must be exhausting to spend your days educating these people. <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't. Opening the minds of this town would be a full-time fucking job. And emotional labor pays shit. Do you ever get lonely in Delos Crossing? Yeah, sometimes. That's why I'm always in Juno working with the JCE, meeting new people. I gotta make my shit happen for me, because no one else will. Right. I feel you. Hey, I hope this isn't too personal, but you ever been with anyone in Delos Crossing? I dated a guy in high school for a minute, but we had to keep it quiet. I've been with a few other people, but that shit's tricky out here. I mean, what about you? You ever been with a guy? I mean, assuming you're into guys, which <laughs> I guess I kind of did. I'm still figuring my shit out. I'm not sure if I'm made to be with anyone, you know? Yeah, of course. And don't ever feel like you have to rush into anything. Yeah, I don't. But thank you. Anyway... And... I'm done. No way! You like Duplex Duo too? Yeah, <laughs> Allison got me into him. We were supposed to go to his show in Juno a few months ago. And what happened? Uh, you ever heard of Moon Rocks? We took two hits before going to the show, and that was it. Our feet couldn't find the floor. Not our finest hour. Is this Chief Brown? Yeah. Are you guys related, or...? Nah, but same clan. So what's your take on him? He's a pretty alright guy, all things considered. All things considered? Like, with him being a cop and all, I mean, it's good to see someone from the clan getting shit done. And he really cares about the community. We need someone like him on top. I gotta tell you, it's so weird to finally meet the other Ronin. You mean the OG Ronin? I was born first, you know? Is that so? I thought Allison said she was. Well, our mother never actually told us, but it was me, so. Why is it so weird to meet me? Because I just heard Allison tell your story so many times. She told me everything about you. Fireweed, your transition. I hope that's okay, by the way. Yeah, it's fine. She asked me first. <laughs> yeah, figures. That lady is thorough and she loves you like crazy. I know. So, yeah, uh, you were probably the first person to know about it other than Allison. I'm glad you trusted me. And it's great to finally get to know you in the flesh. You're pretty all right. Uh, thanks. That's nice of you to say. I mean it. I'm glad Allison has you back. You're going to be a positive influence for her. I know it. We are not going to let her die a slow death in QuickBooks. So I wasn't blowing smoke when I said you should move to Juno with us. I know. I... I've got a community there. Could be yours too. Hmm. Fitting in. There's a concept. Y you have no idea how life saving a chosen family can be. They pull me out of the dark more times than I can count. I hear you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Of course. Shoot. Why do you care so much if I move to Juno? <laughs> Look, like I said, I I want to get to know you. Because I'm just that fascinating, huh? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. You might be one of a kind, Tyler Ronan. <laughs> uh, thank you for that, but... I think you might be looking for something I'm not right now. Oh shit. 
shit, did I make this awkward? No, no, you didn't. Don't worry. I'm just all over the place right now. Of course. Yeah, I get it. So sorry about that. It's really fine. I I appreciate the compliment, though. <clears throat> oh, hey. I've been standing at that counter for an hour waiting for you two dum-dums to come back. Are you guys ready to go? Mm-hmm. I think we've done about as much damage as we can back here. Yeah. Let's go. Here we are. Thanks for letting me hitch a ride over. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah, you're like stretching my legs. It isn't far. And anyway, can't put the wind in a bottle. <laughs> All right. Tessa should be at her parents' grave, not far from the entrance. Look for a big, crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm gonna go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. You look pretty spooked. I've never been a big fan of cemeteries, especially after, you know. I promise after this we can chill at the house, cool? I never wanted to come back here. Yeah, that makes two of us. So, did you ever come back? Shh, keep it down. Better? Much. Why do people always feel like they have to whisper in cemeteries? I don't know. Probably just a mirror neuron thing. A what? Monkey see, monkey do. <sighs> yeah. Uh, anyway, have you been back here at all since the funeral? No. I've never had a reason to. Thankfully. Mother made us come here all the time. It was so weird. Mom, why do we always come here? Does it bother you? No, it's just weird because we don't know any of these people. I, I mean, except Eddie's mom. It never hurts to say hello. Because they're very lonely. That's right, sweetie. And sometimes. Even if you can't see them, they stay with you. In here. Always here. Mom? <laughs> Always. She loved us. A lot, but... Sometimes it was like loving us hurt her. Do you think she was just really scared of losing us? Maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, most parents are scared of losing their kids. Here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. You think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so yes. Wait, is this the one we called Big Crookedy? The exact one. Why didn't we call it Gnarl's Branching? Total missed opportunity. 
<laughs> because we weren't hip to basketball back then? Or CeeLo Green? Yeah. I remember it going all the way up to the clouds. Everything does when you're four feet tall. No dice. De Leon. That's the one. Don't tell me we missed her. Hello, Mr. Eagle. Kids. It's time. Fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? Then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember it. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know I said we didn't have to visit her grave. But it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. of history. What's that mean? Not sure, but Michael should know. When didn't Michael's uncle die? Last year. It was really hard on him. He's still feeling it. Long time no see. Do you want some company? Come on over. Make yourselves comfortable. So, how are you, um, holding up? Everything's such a mess. I thought we'd almost be done packing by now. I'm so ready to put this place behind us. At least Mr. Hollywood Handsome over there is good company. Funny how you never mentioned what your brother looked like before he got into town. Oh, I just thought I'd surprise you. Is this a bad time? With you? Never. Don't mind me. I'm not really here. Hey, I get to see your ugly mug almost every day. You're old news, lady. You wound me. Deeply. <laughs> so, can I help you guys out somehow? So, what was your uncle like? Oh, boy. Where do I start? Y you know that one grumpy grandpa in all the sitcoms? The one that types like a T-Rex and never leaves his recliner? Uh, just how does one type like a T-Rex? You know, uh, almost kissing the keyboard. Like, makes you look like you got tiny baby arms. Like a T-Rex. Never change, Michael. Anyway, as grumpy as he was, they didn't make him any sweeter than him. He's the kind of guy who accepted you for where you were at. Even when he didn't approve. Not many of those out there. Hey, can I ask you something about this place? Yeah, shoot. What's the story behind the Clinkett Memorial? May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost in the chaos of history. That was Uncle William. <laughs> lost in the chaos of history? Well, let's say you wanted room for a school or a road and didn't give a shit about ethics. Easy. You just dug up our ancestors. That shit happened a lot. God. Assholes. Yeah. And I mean, it still happens, but not as much. We have the elders to thank for that. I'll stop bugging you now. Well, I'm here if you're ever curious. Talk to you later. You bet. She's always been jealous because I got the looks. Yeah, but I got the brains. So, 
Oh man, you two are such a pair. Anyway, girl, I know you're in it right now, but try not to let it get to you. Gina's gonna seem real boring after all this, huh? God, boring sounds so good right now. Binging terrible shows while my amazing roommate cooks something delicious. Heaven. Delicious food for tax returns? You got yourself a deal, mister. Where she is? No. For what it's worth, I remember staring at the water during the funeral. <sighs> well, only a few steps in, and I'm already starting to regret this. Allison, please. I'm, I'm not going. Allison, come back. <sighs> Yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards, you and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please, don't worry about me. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. think you killed her. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible, but I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. But I'm gonna come see you every week, and we'll talk with our voice every day. But I'll be back soon, all right? promise. I'll be back soon. I'm gonna come see you every week, and we'll talk with our voice every day. But I'm gonna come see you every week, and we'll talk with our voice every day. We'll see each other soon, then. Stop crying, silly. We have to go, kid. God, I could have sworn it went the other way. I'm so sorry. I... I should have staged a hunger strike until Eddie agreed to drive me. Hey, water under the bridge. You think Snowball still lives in there? Snowy owls only tend to live about ten years. Oh, rest in peace, Snowball. This spot's familiar. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. You think her death kicked off Marianne's, you know? It definitely didn't help, but no. It was years later. Why can't I remember? 
Where is she? Expecting to see. What are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? When we pass on, our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. Letting hers just fall apart would be cruel. I'm not a cruel person. Cruel enough to call social services on our mother. I... I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day... We were going to end up dead? Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to, to- Enough with the excuses. What the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by, and over the years she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her, and the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She pushed us all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us, until you threatened to have us taken away. I couldn't let her drag you down with her. She had you stealing for God's sake. Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. She always thought she was better than the rest of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. If she just settled down with someone instead of running around with married men, well, just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? I... Oh, God. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking. Please, just forget I said anything. Tessa. All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. I'm sorry, kids. I get that Marianne wouldn't let you help her. But there had to be a better way to deal with it. Especially if she was having some kind of crisis. Yes, you're right. There were other things I could have done. Better things. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. I pray for guidance. 
And seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man, I think I have his answer. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been... hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Tyler? I'm done losing people. And if we can't let people grow, then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Thank you. Both of you. Kids, I never knew your mother's whole story, but it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. They're going to be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I think there just might be. I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. Come on. That was something, huh? Yeah, it was. I had pretty much given up on her. But I guess sometimes people change. I know. I feel like a total ass right now. I bet Tessa's thinking the same thing. Yep. Things are going to be real awkward my first day back in the office. Oh, I'm sure you'll both manage to never talk about today. Exactly. Awkward as hell. You want to sit down for a bit? Not a bad view, right? Yeah. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Listen, I know this has been hard. I'm really grateful you saw it through with me. Fireweed was great, but there was no one really there for me like that. You know, you're the only one. Hey, brothers and sisters, right? But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately. Which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, are you still blaming yourself for that? Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. You were just dealing with what happened the way that you needed to, all right? As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house, and you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. You hear? For sure. And anyway, it's not going to be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. So I guess we know the story now, huh? Marianne was done with Delos, and Delos was done with her. Maybe she was too proud, but... She worked so hard for so long, and when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa. Or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she... She... Gave up. But killed her kids? Really? I don't know. It still feels like there's something missing. Right? never gonna understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she didn't. A 
it's probably always going to feel that way. Oh, I'm going to fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Shit. Allison. I'll get the fire extinguisher. Stay there. I got it. What happened? <sighs> there, there was a, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. What guy? What did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight, and, and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Well, at least he left us the junker. So, did Eddie teach you how to put out a fire? Nope. I taught myself. Did he really have to smash everything? He went looking under the rug? This gas can was already here this morning. He didn't bring it with him. Asshole even dumped the drawers. Turn this place At least you were spared. Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? These planks look newer than the rest. That corner used to be all dirt. For chickens. She was always saying how she was gonna make this place a real homestead. Little house on the tundra. I guess we know how he made the hole. Back. I'll be fine. Well, I only know one person who'd bother to decorate a storage box like this. Marianne. Let's open it. What's that there? Some kind of carving. Not sure what it is, though. Wait. Look. It's the same symbol. The Secret Keeper. Well, let's see if we can find any numbers. Three digits. Any ideas? Mm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. That 
did it. Guessing she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. Fuck. That's rough. This... this guy tried to push Mary in to get an abortion. Even though she wanted to keep us. That's everything. What the hell? So... Marianne hid a box under the barn. A box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. He turned the whole place upside down and didn't take anything. All he wanted was that box. And he was willing to burn down the barn to get rid of what was inside. You know what it all means, right? Yep. That guy had an affair with Mary Ann, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. about you, but I haven't forgotten anything about that night. I would have said the same thing, but something felt different. I need to see the rest. But you know what happens down there. That's the thing. I'm not sure I do. <sighs> All right. Let's go. Some kind of work boot. Maybe fishing boots? This is where I trip. The Mad Hunter! Wait, there was someone here that night? In the woods? No, it was just, I, I saw, who the hell did I actually see? Damn, he ran straight for it. No stops, no turns. He was on a mission. was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait! He was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on, do you feel that? Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock, about us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? What if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take that chance. But do we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock.
Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. What? How, how, how can you say that to me? I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? God, I, I don't know. Allison. I'll do it. Let's go. I told you that would happen. We almost had it though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? Don't think about anything else. I'll, I'll try. I don't owe you anything. You've been a little... all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. Sorry, but I'm done. That's it? You're just giving up, just like that? You can't do this. We owe her. Marianne is gone, Tyler. And nothing we do is gonna change that. Don't go, please. You can't keep running from this alley, or it's only gonna get worse. Out of bed. There's no money. I've never asked you for anything, but right now they need you. It's not gonna happen. I've got everything I need to nail your ass in that barn. And just what do you think happens after that? What do you mean? Well, if those kids have a father, you really think there's a court out there that'll let you keep them? No! You have no claim to my children. Get the hell off my property, now. If you ever come back here, I'm going to kill you. Allison.
There's something else. Look at this. Who do you think? Should we give it a shot? I think the crafty goblins have one more hatch to sneak through. Let's go.